Hello guys, this is Code in Code, and this is the, a fifth lecture of this combinatorix course series. And in this lecture, we are going to study pigeonhole principle or Dirichlet box principle. So, first of all, before studying this uh, technique, first of all, you should not make your mind. What do I mean by that? Is most of the students when they study pigeonhole principle, they do not take it seriously. Uh, the uh, the reason is that uh, they think that pigeonhole principle is actually very easy and too naive and and yeah th this is true because pigeonhole principle is literally very easy to understand but what they think is that uh, they do not understand the thing is that there can be problems which are really good and can be solved using uh, pigeonhole principle and that is where they are making mistake let me show you one of the problems in recent contests on code forces which can be solved using pigeonhole principle and that is not an easy problem at all you see uh, this is round 648 div 2 and the problem is e maximum subsequence value the problem is rated 1900 and this problem can be solved using pigeonhole principle so if anyone who thinks that okay there are only easy problems which can be solved using pigeonhole principle i mean you're making a mistake let me show you some of the problems uh this is a website uh aops art of problem solving this is one of the uh one of the really good website that i've seen for mathematical problems and archives so uh, here you can see there are many problems asked in various contests like these three problems are asked in Manhattan Man uh, Mathematical Olympia 2004, 5 and 3 and all of these can be solved using principle of uh, sorry uh, pigeonhole principle. The link to this article I'll be giving in the description so you can solve most of uh, you can try solving these problems and try to think how you would solve using uh, pigeonhole principle once we have studied it. So first thing I want to make clear is that uh, using pigeonhole principles, there can be problems. Uh, the problems can be designed which are easy, yes, and there can be also problems which are not so easy, which can be solved using pigeonhole principles. So don't think like this is a, a too easy uh, too easy concept to learn, and this is naive. Uh, take it seriously. Now, if uh, for those who just think that it is easy just try to solve this problem using pigeonhole principle uh, given an array of m integers or basically you are given m integers where m uh, and also an integer n where m is greater than n so you have to prove that there exist a pair there always exist a pair such that the dif such that their difference is divisible by n that is uh, there always exist a pair a b such that the dif difference that is a minus b modulo n is equals to zero so again you are given m integers where m is strictly greater than n and n is also an integer not equal to zero or you can consider it a positive integer n you can consider it positive integer so you are given m integers and also an, a positive integer n and you have to prove that uh, and also this is important m is strictly greater than n and you have to prove that there always exist a pair such that the difference is divisible by n basically there exists a pair a b such that the difference a minus b modulo n is equals to zero just think for a second try to solve this problem try to prove this fact we will be solving this or proving this fact uh, later in the lecture in the same lecture so let's see what is pigeonhole principle as as i mentioned earlier this is really easy to understand uh, the pigeonhole principle says that if there are n holes and n plus one pigeons uh, remember pigeons are supposed to live in the holes so there are n holes and n plus one pigeons then principle of uh, uh, pigeonhole principle states that there exists at least one hole with two or more pigeons in it of course if if there are n holes and n plus one pigeons so at least one hole would contain more than one pigeons so this is the basic pigeonhole principle there is also a generalized version of pigeonhole principle but we'll look at uh, uh, we'll study that later in this lecture we'll only study pigeonhole principle so now what are the application of uh, pigeonhole principle 
as ex as explained earlier there are many problems which are asked in many uh, mathematical contests you can try solve uh, try solving them also there is a problem here which we will be solving in uh, in in an editorial to this problem which is e problem from from uh, code forces around 648 uh, e and beside these two problem this problem that i have stated in the starting of the uh, in the first slide we are going to solve this in this lecture so of course the question let me repeat again there are m integers and also a given uh, positive integer and and you have to prove that uh, uh, again m is strictly greater than n and we have to prove that there exists there always exists a pair so that the difference is divisible by n that is uh, the pair if the pair is a b then a minus b modulo n should be equal to zero and this is what we have to prove so how we will prove this of course we'll use p general principle but alongside with that we will use modulo arithmetic modulo residue uh, basically modular arithmetic we'll be using modular arithmetic alongside with p general principle to prove this fact let's see how we uh, how we'll do that so we have given oh for any integer n and some integer a a modulo n is going to be or is going to map to one of the elements of the residue class of n so a modulo n is going to be either 0 1 2 3 dash 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 or n minus 1 this is this is also called the residue class of n now if you see 0 1 2 dash 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 n minus 1 the residue class contains n elements right and a modulo n for any integer a a modulo n is going to map to one of these integers so this is one of the fact uh, uh, <clears throat> alongside with this how this is going to help us let's see first let's reduce our problem to something which relates to modular arithmetic first we need to prove uh, we need to prove that there always exists a pair a b such that a minus b modular n is equals to zero now since a minus b modular n is equals to zero we can write it a modular n minus b modular n is equals to zero now this expression if you are wondering how we got here from here now i have already uh, taught you guys in the number theory lecture series we have already studied modular arithmetic in that lecture we have studied how a minus b modular n can be represented as we have also proved this a modular n minus b modular n and so if you are wondering how we came here you can just go in the uh, number theory playlist and you can watch those lecture now since a modular n minus b modular n is equal to zero that means a modular n should be equal to b modular n and what does this say is that if there exists a and b such that their uh, their difference is divisible by n that means uh, then a modular n should be equal to b modular n or basically a and b should map to the same uh, same residue uh, residue modulo n right so this is an important factor that is going to help us solving this problem or proving this problem so let's see how we uh, how we'll prove that so let's suppose holes are number uh, elements of the residue class so holes are these so how many holes do we have we have n holes now see why i'm calling uh, and one more thing and pigeon pigeons are the integers the m integers now why the pigeons are integers and holes i have taken as residue or uh, residue is that suppose just a second suppose n is equals to 7 and m is equals to uh, uh, n an integer is 10 so 10 modulo 7 is equals to 3 that means integer 10 is going inside the hole 3 right so integer 3 uh, integer 10 is mapping to to an integer 3 right modulo 7 so all of the holes will be uh, all of the elements from the residue class will be considering them as holes and all of the integers will be considering them as pigeons so now you see since m is greater than n if you only consider n plus 1 elements out of m then by principle of uh, uh, by pigeonhole principle we are sure that at least two of them must go in the same hole or basically at least there will be at least two elements such that they will be uh, mapped to a same residue that means again there will be at least two elements which will be having same uh, residue that is there will be at least two elements a and b such that a modulo n will be equal to b modulo n and hence we are able to prove that 
using uh, of course pigeonhole principle that there are there will be at least two elements with the same residue and we have already proven that if there are two elements having same re residue that means there exist a pair such that that their difference is divisible by n so you see how we have used pigeonhole principle alongside with the modulo arithmetic to prove this fact now if you want to have some practice just go to this website i'll be putting the link of this website in the lecture and try to solve the second and third problem specifically both of them i believe can be solved using the modular arithmetic along with pigeonhole principle because you can see this is talking about the divisibility by uh, by seven and again here it is talking about the divisibility by 100 and some divisible by 100 so try to solve two and three at least um, i mean try to solve as many problem as you can so that you have idea uh, that how beautiful pigeonhole principle is so this was all for this lecture i hope you have learned something from it so if you have any doubt or query of course you can ask me down in the comment section and of course we will be solving this problem in the late uh, in the next lecture so thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you